Hi, I'm Katie Souza, and you're watching Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. We're continuing our series on the devil and food. Yes, you heard me right. Did you know that Satan is actually trying to use food to kill us? The Bible says that his mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. One of the ways he does that is through food. Think about it. When we overeat or eat the wrong kinds of junk, it can cause us to develop all kinds of food-related diseases that steal from us our quality of life, eventually make us sick, and even kill us. Believe it or not, Satan can influence us to sin with our food. Think about Adam and Eve. Satan used food to cause the entire human race to fall. Wow, that's one successful strategy. Do you think he stopped with an apple? No, he's using food today to continue his mission to destroy mankind. Today, I'm going to expose this assignment and then we're going to break it off of your life. Okay, now, spirits are on assignment. They're on assignment and trust and believe they're also on food assignments. They are trying to drive you to eat. They're trying to drive you to eat so they can cause you shame and condemnation, embarrassment. They're trying to drive you to eat so you'll gain weight. Then if you gain weight, they hopefully are thinking that you'll gain so much weight that eventually you'll get sick. You'll get sick with some gut-related disease, some obesity-related disease, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. What, Crohn's disease, gluten intolerance, acid reflux, whatever those diseases are. The d enemy is definitely using food to try to kill you. Look, food is what the enemy used to cause the fall of the entire human race. Don't even think he's not still using food to trip us up and to try to destroy us. See, food was the bait that Satan used to cause the very first sin. Satan, and in fact, Satan used food to specifically tempt the souls of Adam and Eve. Okay, I'll show that to you, right? Go to Genesis 2, 7. It says that this, that when God breathed into man, he became a, quote, living soul. Everybody say, we are created living souls. Okay, so Adam and Eve were created living souls, just as we are. Now, if you go to Genesis 3, 6, it's the scene in the garden where Satan is tempting Eve with the fruit of the tree. Now, watch how he uses the food to specifically tempt her living soul, okay? It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to her eyes, what are the eyes called? The windows to the and food to be, to be desired, to make one wise. Where do desires come from? Your. Then she took the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Okay, so see that? She saw the fruit. The eyes are the windows to the soul. He used, Satan used the food to tempt her living soul. And it says that she desired the fruit. In the Bible, the word appetite means the soul, right? Because that's where your appetites come from. But it also means the seat of passions and desires. Your soul is the seat of your desires. It's where your passions and desires come from. So when she desired the fruit, the food that Satan was tempting her with, it was her soul that was desiring it. Amen? See, God created them living souls, and Satan took advantage of it just like he's doing with us today. He's taking advantage of our souls and using food to tempt our souls. He tempted their souls with the food and it worked. They sinned. That food strategy was so successful, it caused the fall of the entire human race. Think about it. If you were a smarty pants enemy trying to kill off peeps like us, and you saw how effective your food strategy worked to where it caused the fall of the entire human race, would you keep on using that same strategy? Oh, yeah, are you kidding? No, say, oh, no, it worked once. That's all I need it for. Oh, no. 
Satan is not done using food. He's only just begun. And he's using food to tempt your living souls. Amen? You can also tell if you've got a demonic assignment on you by checking your mind. By checking your mind. How many of you have chatter in your brain all the time? Chatter, 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 chatter. Maybe it's negative chatter like, oh, you're worthless, you're, you're useless, you know, you're never going to win, you're not going to get the breakthrough, you know, you're a big pig, you eat all the time, God will never want to help you. How many of you have chatter like that? Now, how many of you have chatter to go, you should eat, you're hungry, that didn't satisfy you. Maybe try a piece of cake, maybe have something else. Oh, you need a drink now. How many of you have that kind of food chatter in your mind yeah see it's the enemy do you believe that the enemy can actually put thoughts in your mind okay you know what there's not any solid doctrinal evidence of that in the bible but let me just propose to you a couple scriptures so that you'll know you're on solid ground if you are considering that that is the truth amen first of all in um John 8, 44, what does it say about Satan? That when he speaks, everybody say he speaks, a lie, he speaks, say he speaks, from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, according to the scripture, it says twice that Satan speaks a lie. He speaks a lie. Now, I'm sure he speaks through many different types of vehicles. He might speak through a conversation you're having with a person. He might speak through a situation or a, a circumstance that you're dealing with. He might speak a lie through that circumstance and into that circumstance. He might speak through a television broadcast or he might speak through a magazine article or something that you're reading. There's probably many vehicles that Satan speaks through. Do you agree? But in each one of those cases, I challenge you to find another answer. How do we have to perceive it every time? In our when you're monitoring a conversation, where do you perceive that conversation at? When you're watching a broadcast, where do you perceive what's coming through the broadcast? When you're reading an article, where do you perceive the information that's coming through that article? So no matter what vehicle he might use to speak a lie through, eventually it has to get into here, doesn't it? Now, you know, it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that the God of this age, that Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Now, there's two things there. He's blinded the mind. So it shows right there that Satan has power over the mind. Now, it says the mind of unbelievers. You're going, well, that's just for unbelievers. Yet... Yet, in Ephesians 6, it, it tells us, it encourages us, it exhorts us to put on the whole armor of God, doesn't it? The whole armor of God, including the what? The helmet of salvation. What would a helmet do? It would protect your Now, why does it tell us to put on the helmet of salvation to protect our mind? Because, quote, so we can stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles are the crafties and the lies. That's what the word wiles mean. So we're instructed as believers. Remember, Satan has power over the mind. We're instructed as believers to put on the helmet of salvation to protect our mind against the wiles, the lies of the devil. Amen? See, not every thought is your thought. Not every thought is your thought. I went years and years thinking the thoughts in my mind of, you're still hungry even though you ate a 16-ounce uh, steak with a baked potato salad, french fries, and a dessert. You're still hungry. I went years thinking that I really was. That was a lie that Satan was speaking into my mind. And then I would eat, well, I guess I am hungry. I just heard myself say I was hungry. Let me go see if there's any more Doritos magically appearing in my cupboard. And I believe the lie. That's his 
whole plan. See, he speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks into your mind until you finally, like, come into agreement with the thought. Yeah, I guess I am hungry. Yeah, I guess I am worthless. Yeah, I guess I am not ever going to make it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am never going to lose weight. Uh, yeah, I guess I am going to get divorced. Yes, I, get, I, I, I guess I do hate my spouse. Those aren't your thoughts. Stop acting like they are. You got to break your agreement with that thought. Do you understand? You got to recognize the strategies, the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God so you can stand against the wiles, the lies of the devil. Satan is on assignment. One of the ways he gets to you is by chatter, chatter, chatter. Talk, talk, talk. Implant the lie into your mind to see if you'll take the bait. And man, we take the bait. We agree with the lie. And one of the assignments he's on is to make you eat even more. Especially when you give him the right to talk to you because you've been feasting at the table already. Then he'll start the chatter up big time. Eat more, yeah. Oh, no, you're still hungry. That wasn't good enough. Mm, you need something sweet now. Mm. And people will watching, again, I have, to, I have to say this again. People watching will say, why would Satan have to spend his energies with his demons to go out and make people eat? Because if you eat and eat and eat, you'll be ashamed, condemned. You'll be embarrassed. You'll be humiliated. You'll be uncomfortable. You'll, will, you'll lose your strength. You won't be able to exercise. You won't be able to go out and play with your kids. Then eventually you'll develop some heart disease or diabetes or some gut-related diseases. And then hopefully, according to Satan, then you'll die. Gee, that sounds like a pretty effective strategy to me. And it's sneaky because nobody even realizes he's doing it. I do understand what I'm saying to you. I remember, you know, I've been working on this for years. And God has given me such victory, man, such victory. And I remember I was, um, I was doing really well. I had been really cutting down on the food. And, and when I say cutting down on the food, I don't mean I was making myself cut down. I just didn't want to eat as much. Amen? So I was doing really good. And then one weekend, something happened. All of a sudden, I had this, that insatiable food lust return. And I say lust because that's what it was. I was lusting after food, right? I couldn't stop thinking about food. I was home for the weekend. I had just been in a car accident. I was in the back seat of a car that got uh, ran into, um, went to the emergency room. I had some great miracles happen from that. But I was thinking that, okay, maybe I'm still weak from the accident because, man, I'm hungry. I just want to eat and eat and eat. But what was really outstanding about those three days of me just packing it in and stuffing myself was the chatter in my mind. I would go in the kitchen and find something. I'd eat it. I'd walk out, and literally I'd walk out of the kitchen, and I'd hear, mm, no, that, that didn't hit the spot. No, no, I, I, I bet you there's something else in there that would taste better. Mm, you should go check it out. And I went back, and I would find something else, and I'd eat it, and the same thoughts would come. And so I'd go back, and I'd look, and I'd think, well, maybe I'm feeling like this because I'm needing to build up my strength. And, you know, and I would eat everything. I mean, I was eating the old carrots that were, like, dried up. You know how they're in the package, and there's no juice left in them? You know, and then how you have, like, like two bags of chips left, but one of them only has the crumbs at the very bottom. Well, after I finished off the whole bag, I even went for the little crumbs, the stale crumbs. And I kept on going back thinking there'd be something new that I would discover as I opened the magical doors of the refrigerator. Like a bag of Doritos is just going to magically appear out into the cupboard right there. And you know, you know those days when you just eat and eat until there's nothing left but like stale crackers and like expired mustard sardines. But you eat them anyway. You're like, oh, mm, oh sardine. Oh, best sardine ever. It was like that. Three days straight. And I'm like, finally, duh, I think something might be wrong. So I'm like sitting in the bathroom. I'm looking at myself like wiping crumbs off my face going, what is it, God? 
And I stepped out of the bathroom, and he opened my spiritual eyes. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a spirit. It looked like a man dressed in like one of those special ops uniforms with a green beret hat on. And he had a chocolate eclair next to his mouth, and he was going like this. Yeah, eat. Eat some more. Yeah, 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 eat. Eat more, more, more. Eat more. And I was so shocked that I saw him, and he didn't know I saw him, right? I spun around and pointed at him. I went, oh, I saw you. You're busted. I was so mad. I'm like, you know what? I know what you're doing. It's your voice. You've been speaking in my mind. I'm not hungry. It's you. And I, oh, I went crazy, right? I was like, oh, I break my agreement with you. I will not feast at your table of idols. I repent for feasting and letting you trick me and listening to your lie. I don't receive your lies anymore. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. And it worked. Because instantly my mind got quiet. There was no chatter, ratter, ratter anymore in there. Go eat some more sardines. <laughs> and instantly I felt like I wasn't hungry at all. In fact, I felt gross. Sardine burp rising up. <laughs> I felt gross. It's like, oh my gosh, I've been pigging out on every rotten, expired, gross thing in my house for three days. I hate your guts, Satan. But it worked. And that spirit has tried to come back since a couple times. But I rebuke it. See, now I'm on alert, high alert. My brain will not accept every thought because not every thought is mine. And not every thought is yours either. Amen. Part of your generous gift today helps Katie minister to prisoners everywhere. As a thank you, Katie will send you this offer, which includes soul food, real keys to supernatural weight loss. I struggled with lifelong food issues. I went through the whole diet and exercise routine, and the weight that I had just wouldn't come off. Then God showed me that all my problems with food were coming from the wounds in my soul. I was using food to comfort my wounded soul. But once I got my soul healed, I finally got control over my eating and I supernaturally lost weight. And believe it or not, it can happen to you too. Soul Food addresses the root causes of weight gain and food addiction that originate in the soul. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895 or go online to katiesouza.tv with your generous gift of $50 or more. Katie will not only send you Soul Food, but you'll also receive her powerful book, Soul Decrees. Now, people are always asking me, how do I get my soul healed? Well, one of the best ways is by decreeing specific soul scriptures over yourself. Now, to help you, I've compiled those same scriptures that I use in this little book, Soul Decrees, so that you'll have a great tool to get your soul healed. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895 or go online to katiesouza.tv. What's your name, Sugar? Melody. Melody, what happened, dear? Um, for the last three months, I've been having a lot of female prob problems. And, and my abdomen was swelled terribly, and I set an appointment when I get back to go see the gynecologist. And I've really been praying about it. Well, t as we were finishing up today, um, the Lord was showing me, um, my husband and I just did a new church plant. And there's a lot of challenges in that, you think? <laughs> and um, so I don't normally get offended or bitter, but there's been a lot of hard things that have happened. <laughs> My husband and I teach on the healing of the heart. We've been teaching on dream interpretation for the last four years. Um, but this um, information on the dunamis and just some other things just kind of felt like it unlocked another door of understanding because I've been trying to process my heart on, on a daily basis too. But obviously there was things deeper seated that um, I hadn't recognized. And today 
I just recognized that, and I felt the swelling go down in my abdomen. Remember, when you drink the bitter water, your belly swells and your thigh rots. Was it significant in the reduction in here? Yes. 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 Like, like, put your hands out. Can I move your beautiful scarf for just a second? Okay. Put your hands out where, where you feel your belly was before. Like that. Probably like that. That's about three to four inches. Was it even higher here? Or was it low? Low. All low. All low. So did it just drop down and disappear? It hasn't totally disappeared, but it is significantly flatter. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies. I'm telling you what. She could heal of this bitterness. She'll lose weight, and you'll lose it instantly. And then it'll keep going. You're going to be less hungry, too, because you, never, you're not, you notice when you get mad and upset, you, you go eat, don't you? Am I right? I would stuff a bag of Doritos in my mouth with two cans of bean dip. <laughs> Those people. Rah! I'll show them. I'll eat them to death. Well, remember this. Giants were very hungry beings. There's a lot to feed there. How do you feel now, sugar? I feel freer. I, I feel a release is what I felt. Guess what? Now that you're being healed of the bitterness, you're going to prosper even as your soul prospers. Get ready for the breakthrough in the church plant. Amen. Everybody shout, victory! victory! Woo! Come on, let's give God a big hand. Amen. Now, just think about it for a minute. Think about that demon that's been tormenting you. Think about that demon that's had the nerve to say all those things to your mind about how you're fat and you're this and you're a pig and you're unworthy and you'll never get healed and you eat too much and you're still hungry and you want more and you need to have this and you need to drink that. Think about him and now look him in the eye right now. Think about him. Look him in the eye and say, I see you. I see you. And I break my agreement with you. You can't talk to me anymore. I won't listen. And now I send you back to where you came from in the name of Jesus. Now give a big shout at him. Scream at him. Now just get quiet for a minute. How's that voice now? You hear it anymore? That's right. Now, if he tries to come back, what are you going to do? I say drop kick it. <laughs> All right? Amen. Okay, now, this is a very important By the way, you know, I wondered why I saw that demon in the special ops uniform with the Green Beret thing on. So I looked it up, right? It says that Green Berets are a special operations force that use unconventional tactics to win a battle. See, Satan has his own special ops forces. And they're using unconventional tactics to kill, steal, and destroy our lives. And one of them is food. Who would have known? But I'm telling you right now, you need to hear this message because it's one of the sneakiest ways, undercover, special ops ways that he is using to kill the body of Christ. <clears throat> Amen? Wow, that prayer is a life changer. Now, how can you tell if it worked for you? Well, you'll notice your mind will be a lot quieter. You won't have constant thoughts about food. You won't feel as hungry and you won't want to eat as much. You may notice that you'll stop eating after you're full instead of when the plate is empty. Now, if you see those changes happen, but after a while the problems come back, it could mean that an evil spirit is trying to come back and retake his position over your life. Just simply open your mouth if that happens and say, those thoughts about food are not my thoughts. 
I break my agreement with this demonic assignment and I command you to leave in Jesus' name. And then you'll immediately feel the difference. Part of your generous gift today helps Katie minister to prisoners everywhere. As a thank you, Katie will send you this offer, which includes soul food, real keys to supernatural weight loss. I struggled with lifelong food issues. I went through the whole diet and exercise routine and the weight that I had just wouldn't come off. Then God showed me that all my problems with food were coming from the wounds in my soul. I was using food to comfort my wounded soul. But once I got my soul healed, I finally got control over my eating and I supernaturally lost weight. And believe it or not, it can happen to you too. Soul Food addresses the root causes of weight gain and food addiction that originate in the soul. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895 or go online to katiesouza.tv with your generous gift of $50 or more. Katie will not only send you Soul Food, but you'll also receive her powerful book, Soul Decrees. Now, people are always asking me, how do I get my soul healed? Well, one of the best ways is by decreeing specific soul scriptures over yourself. Now, to help you, I've compiled those same scriptures that I use in this little book, Soul Decrees, so that you'll have a great tool to get your soul healed. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895 or go online to katiesouza.tv. I believe that many of you were able to receive comfort and relief from our prayer time today. Be encouraged and full of hope. Today's message could be your new beginning. Next week, we're gonna talk about something that you're doing every day that can cause you to gain a lot of weight, and it's not eating. In fact, it has nothing to do with food. When you find out what it is that's causing you to mysteriously gain so much weight, you're gonna be shocked. See you next week.